Welcome to our Remembering Loved Ones service. I'm Chris Martin, I'm the Team Rector of the Golden Cap Benefits, and I'm so glad that you're able to join us for this special service. In the Church's life, and indeed in the life of the nation, this time of year, and especially the month of November, is very much a time for remembering. November begins with All Saints Day on the 1st of November, and that's a day when the Church remembers and celebrates the lives of its saints, whose examples are set before us to imitate, and in whose lives the Church as a whole has seen the grace of God powerfully at work. And then on the 2nd of November, the Church celebrates All Souls Day, a day for remembering all those people in our own lives who have shown us something worthy, who have enabled us to grow in faith and in love, whose memories we cherish and whose legacy lives on in us. A few days later, of course, we remember, remember the 5th of November with bonfires and fireworks. And then our remembering continues into Remembrance Sunday and Armistice Day, when we remember all those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, enabling us to live in the peace and the freedom that we enjoy today. November has added poignancy for me, as it's the month in which my own father died over 20 years ago. So this time of year is very much a time for remembering. And, of course, we would normally be gathering together for these various occasions, and especially to remember those whom we love, but who we see no longer. And given our circumstances this year, it's, of course, not possible to be able to gather as we normally would, as we might like to. But instead, I hope that through this online service, you may find the grace and the space to do your own remembering. Your own remembering before God of those whose memory is precious to you. I hope it will be a chance to reflect, to pray, and if you wish, to light a candle in memory of the person that you love. And as you do that, may God bless you and bring you comfort and peace as you remember.
Gospel reading today is one which is often heard at funeral services uh, from St John's Gospel and it brings a certain amount of comfort and hope to those who are bereaved and those who are mourning at this time. And it comes from chapter 14 of St John's Gospel beginning at verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the Gospel of Christ. Well, that reading that we just heard from John's Gospel is a very popular choice at funerals. And it records part of the conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples, his friends, shortly before his own death. Sometimes we get to have those conversations, don't we, with our loved ones shortly before they die. And, and sometimes we don't. Sometimes it's just not possible. Jesus has been trying to explain to his friends that he will be with them only a little while longer and that he has to leave them. And his disciples are struggling to understand what he is saying to them. They treasure Jesus' presence. They've been with him for three years. They know his friendship, his joy, his wisdom, his life, his love, his sense of purpose, his enthusiasm for life. And, and here he is saying that he has to go, he has to leave them. Where is he going? Why does he have to go? Why, why now? Why did it turn out like this? These are often some of the questions that we find ourselves asking when somebody whom we love is no longer with us. I find that Jesus' words to his friends offer some very deep reassurance. He says to them, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You know, Jesus can see the trouble in their hearts. Jesus is aware of their sense of shock and bewilderment and confusion and anger even. You know, the grief that we experience when a loved one dies is not hidden from God. Jesus understands the pain and the grief and the feelings of loss that we experience because he knows his friends so intimately. He's able to see into their hearts and he understands their anguish. God in Christ knows our grief. And Jesus then looks upon it with compassion and seeks to offer reassurance. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And he continues, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. You see, because Jesus is about to conquer death, he is able to offer his grief-stricken disciples words of comfort, words of hope, words of reassurance, words that can only be offered by someone who walks through death and into resurrection, into a life that never ends. Jesus knows what his friends are feeling. 
and then is able to offer comfort and reassurance. I go to prepare a place for you. Not only will I find a way through death, says Jesus, but I'm going to come back and take you through it too, to the place I'm getting ready for you, to one of the many rooms in what Jesus simply calls his father's house. And Jesus' words echo through the centuries to us because this is the Christian hope of resurrection. These are the words of a God who, in Jesus Christ, has walked the path that we walk, who has died the death that we all will die, and who understands the emotions and the sense of loss that we experience when someone we love is no longer with us. Jesus has shown us that he has the means of preparing a place for us and the power to bring us home to God, the God who made us in God's image. Because we are eternal creatures too. Our lives are not ended by death. Because Jesus has overcome death. He has defeated the enemy that lies in wait for each of us. And because he has done so, we are able to say that death is simply a comma and not a full stop. I don't know how much of this your loved ones or mine comprehended but God loves us God is faithful God is merciful God is loving God is kind God is fair God is just God is good and because of that we can trust our loved ones with God we can entrust them afresh today into God's loving and tender care and into the place that God has prepared for them. Amen. Following on from our Rector's talk, here are a few words written a century ago by Bishop Brent answering the question, What is dying? A ship sails, and I stand watching till she fades on the horizon, and someone at my side says, She is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large as when I saw her. The diminished size and total loss of sight is in me, not in her. And just at that moment... When someone at my side says, she is gone, there are others who are watching her coming, and other voices take up a glad shout, there she comes, and that is dying. And now, let us remember those whom we love but see no longer.
Let us now bring together our thoughts and our feelings at this time in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn, that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you know the secrets of life and death. You know the sorrows of our hearts. Give us your comfort and peace, and help us to trust you for the future, that we may face every new circumstance of life with courage, patience and hope. Amen. Bring us, O Lord God, at our last awakening into the house and gate of heaven, to enter into that gate and dwell in that house, where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one equal light, no noise nor silence, but one equal music, no fears nor hopes, but one equal possession, no ends nor beginnings, but one equal eternity, in the habitation of thy glory and dominion, world without end. Amen. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Amen. The Collect for today. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now let us draw our prayers together by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love and remember today and always. Amen.